learning about her, I advise her to treat by the Gibson girl. She provides comfort, reassurance and safety. And something to do if your ship is wrecked and you're marooned on a remote desert island. She was shaped like this and you hold it between your legs and crank like this. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, check out the videos that follow. It might be one of those Gibson Girl lifeboat radios. In a nutshell, the Gibson Girl was an emergency beacon transmitter, a forerunner of today's EPIRPS. It put out about 5 watts of modulated CW on 500 kilohertz. Advances in technology have allowed much smaller versions to be built. Here's mine, built in a hand cranked torch. There are no external parts except for the wire to the antenna connection. You crank the handle and press the key and this will transmit a CW signal, in this case on 7 MHz. Output power is around 500 milliwatts, enough to be heard hundreds of kilometres away under favourable conditions. Here's the circuit. It's basically a copy of the famous OXO QRP transmitter, developed by GM3OXX around 30 years ago. A one transistor, in this case a BC548, provides the crystal oscillator, and that drives the final transistor, which is a BD139. The output tank is just a simple Pi network, comprising a one microhenry RF choke and two capacitors. The keying is provided by a PNP transistor, which switches the final transistor on and off when the key is pressed. The power comes from the generator in the wind-up torch. That's the only part of the torch that you need to keep. The other, including the circuit board, can be taken out and replaced with a small matrix board which has these transmitter components installed. The crystal is 7.023 MHz a convenient frequency in the CW part of 40 metres. As for the key, I'm using a switch salvaged from the front panel of an old video recorder. I've glued it to where the LEDs were in the torch. Not the best of sending, but still intelligible enough. An interesting thing you notice is the more current you draw, the harder the cranking gets. When I press the key, there's definitely more resistance. Still, it's not too hard to crank and get your 500 milliwatts. Because there's no voltage regulation, there is some frequency variation depending on the speed that you're turning the handle. However, it's really not objectionable. One of the features you'll notice is there's a small back wave when I'm not pressing the key. That's deliberate, as well as providing better frequency stability with the oscillator on all the time that the thing is being cranked, it could provide a BFO for a receiver. For instance, if you're using an AM shortwave receiver as the receiver for this, then the BFO will allow CW signals to be heard. The frequency offset isn't much at normal turning speeds, but if you slow the turning down, the frequency varies. And you should probably have two or three hundred hertz offset. That would be enough just to hear an incoming CW signal. As you can hear, the oscillator takes very little power and only slow motion is needed to energize it. How far can a transmitter like this get out? After all, it's only 500 milliwatts, less if you're tired. I've been identified at distances of around 4 or 500 kilometres, and the signal's being detected at around 700 kilometres. That's pretty typical for 40 metres QRP, and your results should be similar. Some people say there's enough cranks on the amateur bands. But I reckon there's always room for one more, especially if it's of the human-powered variety. 